this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe right out of the gate. Hit that like button. All right, today is an update on two cases. The first one, sadly, is an update on Amanda Nenegar, who went missing on February 27th after making a 911 call. And it's very frustrating to me because Amanda Nenegar during the 911 call, when asked to give the coordinates, gave out precisely the correct coordinates of exactly where she was when she made that phone call. So I'll play that portion right here. Listen to this. 33 degrees. Give me, okay, give me one second. 33? Degrees 16. Okay, so the, now how about like 33, like decimal? Decimal 16, apostrophe, 53, period. Okay, so 33, okay, give me one second, let me try this. Uh, okay, so let's see here. 33, uh-huh, uh -huh. and then after 33? 30, oh, 3.3. Apostrophe in. Okay, so it starts. Okay, so it starts out. It starts off with thirty-three, correct? Yes. Okay, and then after the thirty-three, then what? In apostrophe in. Uh huh. Degrees. Okay, you, you you cut out just a little bit. I, I see. He should have just let her keep talking. She was saying it perfectly to begin with. I mean, this guy needs to just shut the hell up sometimes and just listen. And just start over again. Okay, so. 30, it starts with 33, correct? Mm hmm What's after the 33? The decimal. Okay, then I'll go to the, after that. 16. 16, uh-huh, and then after that? Apostrophe. Okay, and then? 53. 53, okay. Period. Okay. 3. Okay. Apostrophe. Okay. Capital N. Capital N, okay, and then? And then what's the what's? So you said apostrophe. It's an actual like qu quotation symbol for feet or inches. So it's like sixteen feet is the apostrophe, and then point three inches at the end. And she originally was saying thirty three degrees, and then she started to get him to say decimal. But it's obvious if you know GPS coordinates what she's saying. Okay, so she right now she's given out the first portion clearly. But what's after that? 114. Okay. Uh, is, it, is there a minus before that or no? No. Okay, so 114. Uh-huh, and then 35. Mm-hmm. Apostrophe. Mm-hmm. 25. Okay. Point zero. Apostrophe what? 85 is 110, 879. And there you go. Those coordinates right there lead you directly to this spot right here. And she said she was up on a hill uh, trying to call. Now her vehicle was, uh, let's see, let, let's get the map here. It's right there. Her car was on top of a, a rock in this general area. Actually, I think it was more like right here. Uh, I think later on we were able to determine it's more like right in this area. But it's close to this spot, right? But I think it's more like right here-ish. So she goes up here. She's on the uh, upper location right here where she made the 911 call. And she gave out the coordinates exactly correct. And the family came on the show with one of the searchers. And they go, oh, wow, we weren't, we're not searching in that area. They were looking way over here. I mean, it's ridiculous. They were looking over here by Highway 95, like four miles over. And I said, well, that's not where she made the call from. And I know that they were going to be sending more people out there. It turns out that they found her body right here, only 0 .22 miles from where she made that 911 call. Help never came. This was February 27th. At the very end of the, the 911 call, she was getting scared, dizzy, and feeling like she was going to faint. And she gave it out exactly the information she needed to give out. And help didn't come. Somebody should have reviewed the 911 call. Wrote down the correct coordinates. Somebody that knows what GPS coordinates are. And got the hell out there and found her. 
Now, I know there's a lot of online groups out there that are attacking the family members. I mean, just grow up, okay? You guys are absolutely ridiculous people. Um, they, they've lost a child and a sister here, and they have nothing to do with it, okay? She drove out here on her own. Uh, you see her leaving on surveillance footage at 3 in the morning and drove out here. Now, she was found uh, nude, and I guess she was, you know, decomposed. It's like a month later, and I guess apparently her... Uh, passport was next to her, whatever that means, okay? So I guess I can't say, oh, wow, there's no foul play, but her shedding her clothing isn't unusual because I think she had, like, heat exhaustion. Uh, it's very hot in this area. It's Southern California. This is near Blythe, California. If we zoom out like this, I mean, Mexico is just right there, and it's right in this area. And interestingly, I mean, she drove down this road and then went off on this road, and that road actually ends right there, and then it be, just becomes a wash, and then she drove up through here on, the, on a wash, and then her car got stuck on a rock, and she made the 911 call right there, and her body was found there. So everybody put out some uh, prayers for Nenegar's family members. Absolutely ridiculous that they didn't go out and find her right away as a matter of fact i don't know why they have didn't find her after the show it was like on the 26th or 27th and she wasn't found till the 29th i mean if you just go out to the coordinates right there it is kind of rocky and stuff but just walk up the wash and apparently she was in the wash underneath the tree trying to maybe stay cool now you can also make an argument if there's something nefarious that somebody put her under the tree to avoid her being spotted by a camera, like a, a plane, you know, uh, flying overhead or a drone, something like that. All right, the next update is in the, is in the Riley Strain case. Uh, there's a little bit more information that came out a couple days ago that I didn't see yet uh, regarding the case. So just to, the quick recap is that uh, I think it was on March 8th, Riley Strain was at the Luke Bryan bar here, but after having one drink, that's what the bar claims they gave him is just one drink. Uh, but he was probably had some drinks prior, and he walks down the street right here at around 9, you know, leaves there probably 9.30-ish. And then 9.45, he cuts through here, and he falls down, hits his head on the ground, gets up, he's staggering around. He was highly intoxicated, it looked like. Another surveillance shot right here at 9.45 and 57 seconds. About 9.47, he goes through this intersection right here. He walks this direction. Passes a police car at like 9.51 and some odd seconds right in this area. And he goes under here probably like 9.52. And he's in this area, 9.52, 9.53. And he's last seen on a camera walking by a post right here and then disappearing behind about right in this area. So he walks by. He's only seen in this little bit of a window right here. And then he doesn't show up on a camera that's right here. So um, somebody actually found his credit card down below the bridge right there. And it was assumed that he went into the water. What we were always wondering about is... Did he go into the water accidentally, or did he go into the water by someone else's hand? And that's a question we don't have an answer to. Uh, the information that's come out recently, however, is that he had, let's see, he was wearing the shirt. People were claiming that one of the homeless people was wearing a shirt. That's absolutely false. Uh, he had a shirt on. He had a, his wristwatch on. And now it turns out that he also had on his boxers and his socks. Now here's an article by Nick Barris at NC5. Starts off with a dramatic title, Case Not Closed, Significant New Developments in the Investigation into the Death of Riley Strain. To date, authorities say there appears to be no sign of foul play. But a strained family friend says the parents ordered a second autopsy and that they have questions about what happened to some of their son's clothing. The case remains open, and now a world-renowned expert in body decomposition questions what happened to Riley. 
Riley was fully clothed in the security video the night he disappeared, but when he was pulled from the river two weeks later, I learned Riley didn't have pants on or his boots. Only his boxer shorts and socks remained. So that's how I just learned that he had his boxer shorts on and socks. However, police confirmed when his body was found that Riley still had his shirt and Apple watch on his wrist. So do articles of clothing typically come off drowning victims? I sought the opinion of my friend, Dr. Bill Bass. He said, it is unusual. Normally, if you fall in the river, the very di it's very difficult to get your pants off. But I, I think that's sort of a different thing to talk about. I mean, over time, perhaps the boots became more pliable and you know filled with water. The body decomposition, maybe the boots were able to come off. I'm not really sure you can compare it to just falling in the water and how difficult it is. No, they would not come off themselves, he said. He said debris could have snagged the clothing, or he had another theory. I would say somebody took them off, Bass said. If you do research on this, it would be very difficult because you've got to kill a person to do it, but it's difficult to get your pants off. It's difficult when you're alive to get your pants off. So the question, how did the pants and boots come off the body? News Channel 5 spoke with Riley's stepdad, Chris Whitey, who says he didn't want to comment now about the second autopsy since the family is focused on Riley's funeral on Friday. But he did say they have big things to share next week. So a question I would have is, we, we know that clothing can come off in currents, but you would think that if his shoes came off, that the socks would have come off as well. Socks would m way more easily come off in water than a pair of boots, all right? And his jeans would be difficult to come off. So the jeans, his boots are missing. He apparently still had his socks on and boxer shorts. So for me, that's pretty significant. And one of the more significant things was, is the, as I stated in another video, was that the family spokesperson said that you know, they were interested in somebody that was talking underneath bridge number two. And when they called the police to say, hey, we're, we're talking to this guy that we're interested in. Uh, they go, hey, we're not, uh, we don't think that guy has anything to do with it. We're interested in somebody else. I mean, that's interesting, right? That means that they're interested in somebody else, which absolutely means that they're looking to see if there's anything else to this. I mean, it could have just been an opportunistic person where he maybe went to the bathroom, Riley, and then he fell over that uh, short railing that's right down here. If we go down to Street View, the railing is pretty low right there. So it's possible he was standing right there and he fell over. And then right after that, there's a kind of a steep little uh, really loose dirt area and then a steep drop off of like 15, 20 feet. And the water was much higher, so he would have hit the rocks and then gone into the water right there. So that is where he went in down there. Uh, I know you think it's also interesting, if you think about it, leave a comment in the comment section, that there was a guy right down here who said he looked up and he heard a commotion. And the guy said, oh, he's he just drunk. There was another person up there that says, oh, he's just drunk. And apparently that's the person that the family was interested in talking to. But the person down below, how come they didn't see Riley's strain fall over? They're right there, or at least hear it. It seems like it would be really obvious something like that. So something isn't really clicking in terms of like what they're telling police down there. You know, I don't know if anything else extra happened. All I'm saying is I think it's strange that the person down below that noticed the commotion up above doesn't remember hearing or seeing him go into the water, which is down where he was. That's strange, isn't it? Now, also, what I've been pointing out to people is, so this is right around 953, 954-ish, probably when he went in the water. And then at 955, there's a person running from right here. Let me go down the street view and show you where the camera is. We're going down right here. I'm going to turn. And right there is the camera. So this would film at 180 degrees. I'll go a little one more this way just so you can get a better 
view of these cameras. They're right here, okay? And so that's why I have that line on the ground right there. Let's go up in the air again and see the line. That's where the camera picks up people. So there's a person that comes into the scene running and then slows down right here, right when a vehicle is about to show up. Just like all any of us would do when we were kids. Like, oh, you, you know, you did something, you know, sort of mischievous and you're running and running. Oh, and then you're, now the coast is clear and you start walking slowly, right? That's what it feels like when you watch it. Let me show you guys. So you can probably see it. It's not, I don't have it set up where it's really big on the screen. Uh, that's, that's better right there. Let's play it. So here's 9.55 and four seconds. And just in a moment here, the timing of this to me is very suspicious. It's so close to when Riley Stream went in the water. Here he is. There's a person running right here. See that? You can see him on the screen running. Now watch. Right here they slow down and start walking. And the reason they started doing that is because a vehicle is coming. You see that? And I think there's even another car that comes from uh, the other direction. So now they're still going to keep walking. I, I just find this, this part really, really interesting. All right, let's take a look at that again. Let me move it back to 9.55. And let's play that again. I think it's hard to ignore the timing of this, knowing that it's one minute after... Riley Strain likely went in the water. This person's running from that area and then slows down right there. Right when a car is about to drive by, you wouldn't want to draw attention to yourself. You just look like a normal person walking. Now, it possibly could just be a jogger, but it's really difficult to ignore the timing of it. All right, so let's go back up to uh, Street View here. Uh, so... This is where I think it's possible. The person was running from right here. Then you see them on camera right there, and they run about to there, and then they slow down and start walking. So after they've cleared the area, I mean, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, to me, it's really interesting. I know I've been bringing it up on various videos, but now we know that he had his socks and his boxers on. I mean, those things are loose fitting. Those things would seemingly come off way easier. If, uh, if it were truly is the current that removed the items. Now, I, do, I know it is common for people to lose clothing uh, when they go in the water, but man, he had boots on and jeans, and just over time, it just feels like it'd be pretty difficult for both boots to have come off and then leave the socks on. I mean, wouldn't just the process of the boot coming off remove the sock? I don't know, man. <laughs> that just, I'm just trying to use logic and common sense, and that really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay, so man, I mean, the first case, Amanda Nenegar, what an absolute embarrassment by the 911 department not to be able to get somebody out there. And she isn't even found for over a month, and she's only 0.22 miles from where she made the 911 call. And in the Riley Strain case, we know now that the police were interested in somebody else, that Riley Strain was found without his pants on or his boots, but he had his shirt on, his watch on, the boxers he was wearing, and socks, and you have somebody running away from the crime scene a minute after he would have gone missing. I find that interesting. All right, everybody. Thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a like if you can, if you like the video, and share the video, and subscribe. And please leave a comment in the comment section. I think this is really interesting information. The first case is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if there's lawsuit ability in that case, but man, that's insane. So thank you all again very much for watching. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there.